Hey everyone, welcome back to my another tutorial series about deep neural networks with NumPy and this part will be called about initialization and neural networks require specifying an initial value of the weights. Uh, so a well chosen initialization method would improve our learning and accuracy. So if you were reading my previous tutorial parts, you probably followed my instructions for weight initialization and it has worked out so far. But how do you choose the initialization for another neural network? In this part, I'll show you that different initialization can lead to different results. So a well-chosen initialization can speed up the convergence of the gradient descent and increase the odds of gradient descent converging to a lower training error. I will use the same code from my last tutorial series where we used the, uh, to classify circles. And of course I thought about cats and dogs, but whatever, I chose the faster method. So before we used a random weight initialization, now we'll try, so call it HE initialization. So here was our initialized parameters function and here was our deep parameters function. So I'll use deep and H E initialization is named for the first author of G et al. in 2015. So if you have heard of severe initialization, this is similar except uh, severe initialization uses a scaling factor for the weights of W. So it was used uh, 1 divided by layer dims in square root. So we are now will use 2 divided by layer dims in square root. So before we used it, this method and in this tutorial I will use similar method but instead of deep I'll write it HE initialization and this is so called H initialization. So the only difference is that instead of multiplying a run run numpy random number by 001 will multiply by he initialization method and this is recommended only for ELU so I'll just remove this and I'll write that numpy square square root and 2 divided by layer dims and here is simply a length of our previous layer. So that's it. This is the initialization we used before. And at first, uh, let's test our results with our deep initialization. And then we will run another initialization. And I'll call it HE. And we'll compare the results. So I'll run the code here. And let's see. What will receive? Okay, it will run for all the steps needed. I'll just wait. So here it is, it finished off training. And as you can see, it has a sharp drop here. And okay, I'll make a snippet. Not to waste our time. I'll have it somewhere here. And now let's try our deep initialization there was a 73.33 training accuracy and as you can see it, it looks quite fine and right now let's try our he initialization as i used before and where is my fin final model let me try to find it here it is and here instead of deep i'll use he just like that. It's also deep, but it's it uses H initialization. So let's run this and then we'll compare our results. Okay. It's something different here. I okay. I use the wrong code here. It's divided by layer dimensions. Okay, let's run it again.
So here it is, it finished off training and right now as you can see we can compare our charts. So as before there was a sharp drop here. I can, why I can draw it red pen? Here was a sharp drop and here it's it's dropping from the beginning and as you can see here at the bottom it just getting lower and lower and lower and okay we'll see what will receive results but as you can see our parameters initialization can lead us to better training or better uh, accuracy or whatever so let's see what we'll receive now before was 73.3 remember so i'll just turn it off and as you can see it's now re reached of 79 percent of accuracy it's much better than before and yeah as you can see i in, i provided you that and proved you that initialization method can lead to better ac training accuracy and it works better just and the classification results are i don't know it's five percent better so we should remi remember that Different parameters initialization methods lead uh, to different results and random initialization is used to break symmetry and to make sure different hidden units can learn different things. But we can add more to this. So don't do not initialize to values that are too large but initializing with or large random numbers will slow down the optimization. So that's why in first place we multiplied our weights by 0.01. And as you saw, HE initialization works well for networks with ReLU activation. So this is the last deep learning tutorial. To get better results, you can try to optimize the, this deep neural network by implementing L2 regularization, dropout, and gradient checking. You can try to optimize using momentum, atom, optimizer, or implementing training with mini batches. Whatever, there is a lot of ways you can improve this and learn deep learning with NumPy. But for me, that's it. That's all. And I'll think I'll close this tutorial series and I'll move to TensorFlow object detection, recurrent networks, and so on. So I'll move to more interesting stuff and more practical and more well, what we can use more. So thank you all for watching. Please subscribe my channel and yeah, see you next time in my next tutorial series.